All right. Masters qualifiers are here. Everybody knows what they are. So we've got four workouts like they traditionally, traditionally are over the course of four days, four and a half days if you count last night. Uh, and we've got <clears throat> for number one, uh, they've got the 21-15-9 row thruster, just nastiness, right? Uh, number two, we've got a 1RM deadlift. I kind of like that. Um, it's going to kind of make up for some of the, the lack of load in the open that we didn't really see for most people. Uh, number three, we've got a 15-minute AMRAP, right? Double unders, chest to bar, five how uh, we've got hang power cleans. Um, that one uh, is, is going to be a great one. Uh, for those of you guys who are good at double unders and have an aerobic engine. Number four, we've got, uh, you know, burpees, overhead squats, muscle ups, pretty quick, uh, obviously dependent upon if you have muscle ups, if you're in the older uh, category, then you're looking at dips. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about is just the breakup and the strategy around when you should do these, right, the timing. and. I think the most important thing to, to first think about is what type of athlete you are. And so um, we have three different groups or categories that, that I think encompass most of the folks, right? Um, obviously there's gonna be some folks that aren't um, in these, right? You might be an outlier. In that case, uh, you kinda gotta make uh, the best decision you can. But basically uh, we've got aerobic, aerobically powerful, uh, we've got powerful athlete, basically just think of yourself as a strength athlete. And then we've got somebody who um, basically doesn't have muscle ups, right? Uh, where muscle ups is your weakness. Um, so I would, I would suggest for the aerobically uh, strong athlete, last night uh, you should have done the deadlift uh, 21 15 9. Uh, that, um, you know, you could have gotten out of the way, both of them in, in, in one session, probably pretty good. Um, if you didn't do the deadlift yesterday and you're thinking about doing the deadlift today and Monday as a repeat, just make sure the number one most important thing is don't get that ugly uh, rounded back, um, you know, uh, kind of shivers, kind of horrible form on that deadlift because that's going to just crush you for the next three days. So if you do build to a heavy deadlift uh, today, just make sure it's smooth, crisp, it's heavy, but you're not breaking form and so it doesn't bury you for the next three days. Uh, then what I'm going to suggest is tomorrow morning, or uh, uh, actually tomorrow, sorry, today, um, is going to be the 15 minute AMRAP. And then from the 15 minute AMRAP, uh, Saturday is going to be a rest day. Uh, Sunday, uh, AM, the four time piece, and if you're feeling good in the 21-15-9, um, piece wasn't where you wanted it to be. You could think about doing the 21-15-9 Sunday evening. Uh, rolling into Monday, I'm going to suggest a deadlift in the morning. And then in the PM, basically your worst uh, finish, your worst performance, there's an opportunity to repeat it. For the powerfully uh, strong, right, the, the strength athlete, uh, last night, 21-15-9. Uh, today, for the basically do the four time. And then Saturday, focus on the AMRAP. Sunday can be your rest, and then deadlift uh, on Monday, followed in the PM by your worst finish. Uh, for the strength athletes, the powerful athletes, uh, you might be tempted to, to get in a one max, one RM deadlift. I would avoid that. Um, it's probably gonna crush your central nervous system if, you know, neurologically you guys are probably a lot more um, uh, inefficient, so to speak, and so uh, the effects of a deadlift is going to be greater than somebody who uh, can't elicit that same uh, CNS response, isn't, doesn't have that same power, right? Uh, for the muscle up weakness, um, right, it's going to uh, be similar to, um, you know, uh, last night's aerobic group, and so we have the one rep max uh, deadlift, except now I'm going to uh, suggest instead of the 21-15-9 that you do the muscle up workout. Uh, it'll give you an opportunity just to kind of get in there um, and, and you know see what you got with those muscle ups while you're fresh. 21-15-9 uh, today, which is going to be um, on Friday. Then uh, in the AM on Saturday you can go for um, the, the muscle up again, the four time. This is going to allow you another chance at it. Should be fairly fresh. Um, and then the 15-minute AMRAP in the PM on Saturday. 
Uh, Sunday, I would recommend resting. Monday, uh, we're looking at that 1RM deadlift um, and your worst event in the PM. Now, the one caveat is if your uh, muscle-ups aren't that great, and how, I def how I'm defining that is if you don't think you can get through the muscle-up workout in the 20 minutes, you definitely fall into this category. Uh, if you can't string more than uh, you know, two together, you, you probably fall into this category. If you f find yourself uh, missing a lot, definitely kind of fall into this category. Uh, if you happen to be a strength athlete and have poor muscle-ups, um, I would not have done the deadlift um, on Thursday, uh, and I would kind of resist the urge to do the deadlift uh, before Monday, right? So that's the breakup uh, I suggest. There's a lot of ways to do it. Uh, this one makes the most sense, giving you the most rest and the best opportunity to get, to get the, most, the best score on each one. All right, now that you guys uh, know the layout and uh, understand where you fit best, I'm gonna go into each one uh, really quickly. You guys have seen all the open uh, strategy tips out there uh, during those five weeks, and so I'm gonna kinda try to keep this brief. Uh, you guys already should have a really good understanding of all these things that are important, right? So number one, 21, 15, nine, row thruster. Uh, mobility, you know, we're older athletes, so warm up those shoulders if you need to, to be efficient in that thruster. Uh, you guys should know what to do. Uh, warm up, right, this is a quick one. So just a general rule of thumb, right, the, the shorter the workout, the longer the warm up. So make sure you uh, warm up your aerobic capacity. Um, make sure you get some, some squatting in there, some knee flexion. Make sure you practice the thrusters a little bit. Um, you know, you definitely want to warm up, uh, you know, the hips hamstrings, things like that. Uh, in terms of equipment, uh, it doesn't take much. Uh, just make sure that um, you know, your rower and barbell are set up uh, to the most efficient spacing, right? Know your damper setting. Um, not gonna go into much there. If, if you have questions about that, there's a ton of stuff online. Uh, but at this point, don't change anything. Whatever you're used to rowing at, just kind of keep it. Um, you know, in terms of pacing, you know, this is one that um, the thrusters should be unbroken. That should be your goal. And the row, um, yeah, you basically, you guys know your, your calorie pace by now and, and basically you want to pace it to maintain things. The most important thing here is going to be making sure you warm up appropriately so you don't get into the workout and get kind of hit in the face, right? So um, in terms of fueling, um, you know, this one's quick, fast, uh, depending on where you do it in the weekend, just make sure you eat uh, probably about two hours before, maybe some BCAAs, um, just right before, but you want to go into to this kind of an empty stomach. Not hungry, but uh, you know, you don't want a lot of stuff smacking around in your stomach. So, uh, you know, keep that in mind. Um, throughout the entire, um, the entire, uh, you know, master's qualifying process, uh, fueling, sleeping, and resting is going to be the most important thing, so make sure you take care of that. All right, so now with the deadlift. The deadlift is pretty straightforward. Make sure you read the rules. Uh, you gotta weigh yourself, uh, so that kind of takes into account kind of like last year's uh, max effort lift. Um, the deadlift is pretty straightforward, right? It's a bunch of weight on the ground. You gotta pick it up. Uh, you guys know how to warm up for this. Um, essentially, um, I would recommend uh, definitely filming the two attempts leading up to what you think you can do. Don't wait to turn on that camera uh, right before you're gonna go and then you don't make it and then you miss it and you know, it just creates a bunch of issues. So just kind of get in the couple attempts beforehand just to kind of lock in a score, um, go through the whole filming process, things like that. Um, <clears throat> this one is very important in where you put it in to um, your week in terms of layout based on the type of athlete you are. If you're a powerful athlete and you do this today, it will crush you for the next three or four days. If you know that deadlifts tend to crush you, um, you know, as older athletes, um, you know, it, it takes a little less to get a dose response out of our CNS, so just kind of keep that in mind as well. You know, in terms of warm up, it's pretty straightforward. Um, equipment, you know, you got a barbell, a bunch of weights. Um, just make sure you count right. Um, pacing uh, tips, not much there. And then fueling, just make sure you go in ready to kill it. All right, so now we got the 15 minute AMRAP, right? We've got 55 double unders, 15 uh, chest to bar, and five hang power cleans. The hang power cleans are fairly uh, light. Uh, mobility for sure, ankles, 
Uh, think about opening up your, your shoulders for those chest to bar to be efficient with them. Uh, you know, and that front rack. Um, you guys should know already how to do that, so just kind of take care of those items right there. In terms of warming up, this is a long one, right? You want to make sure that you kind of in that zone with double unders. Um, I wouldn't spend a lot of time messing around with chest to bar. Maybe get one or two in, but you don't want to waste them. It's a big volume of chest to bar pull ups, right? This whole workout is about the chest to bar pull ups. Um, that's if you have double unders. Uh, the power cleans are light enough, shouldn't really impact you all that much. Um, in terms of layout, a uh, little reminder, right, two jump ropes, make sure you're efficient with, um, you know, the spacing of your equipment, things like that. Make sure you're on a bar that you're comfortable with. Chalks there, don't spend a lot of time chalking up for sure. Um, and in terms of pacing, um, you know, definitely pace it off of the muscle fatigue in the chest to bar. It's all going to be about muscle endurance right there. Definitely going to get your heart rate up, but again, this is going to be about making sure that you can continually move through those chest to bar. Um, if you don't have double unders and you struggle with double unders, then um, you know you just kind of got to get what you can, keep moving, uh, and I think that's the key to this 15-minute interrupt is just make sure you keep moving. In terms of fueling, uh, I'd approach it probably similar to the 21-15-9. Uh, definitely make sure that you uh, end up uh, refueling right away after this one. All right, number four, uh, this one I love, right? 55 burpees, 34 overhead squats, 95, 65, so fairly light, and 21 muscle ups. So those of you guys who um, are gymnastically strong, uh, this one is built for you, right? Um, as long as you have the overhead position stability. So again, mobility, warm up that overhead position for sure. Um, especially in the muscle ups, just being able to get that swing open up is gonna be huge, right? So um, I'd say the focus on hips, ankles, shoulders, make sure you can be efficient in those overhead squats. Uh, in terms of warm up, it's gonna not gonna take much um, make sure you get into a rhythm of the muscle ups. It's gonna, muscle ups are going to feel a lot different, um, you know, after all those reps versus fresh. So I just do a couple, um, you know, maybe some some uh, swings, you know, any of the gymnastics warm ups and stuff like that that Sorel uh, has put out that you know work for you. I definitely go for it. Um, this one's um, going to be fast. So think about the same time duration, same type of warm-up you'd use for the 21-15-9. And so in terms of um, you know, the pacing and the tips, I'd think about burpees. Uh, you know, make sure you maintain a pace that you can get into the overhead squats really efficient and smooth, right? You want to make sure that those overhead squats um, not necessarily going to go unbroken, but make sure that you're efficient with them. And then when you get to the muscle-ups, uh, just manage that muscle endurance. Uh, you know, depending on how many you have unbroken, um, you want to just break it up so your last three or four um, are still feeling good uh, and you're not getting to the point of failure, if that makes sense. Uh, fueling, uh, you know, pretty straightforward. I just go with the 21-15-9 uh, kind of strategy, making sure that you go in a little bit on the empty side uh, and then refueling right after. So. All right, guys, here's some just last minute thoughts to kind of tie some uh, pieces together. Uh, this thing in the thrusters, just make sure that uh, taking the opportunity to breathe, right, at the top of the rep. Even if it's a pause there and you go unbroken, you'll save time. Uh, I'd say that in the row uh, thruster, um, strive for being unbroken, right? Um, 15 minute AMRAP, just really focus on double unders, relaxed shoulders. That's going to be huge when it comes back to the chest to bar. Uh, during the chest to bar, if you guys um, you know, used Jake's strategy of stacking plates and then dropping into it and using that momentum to actually get some reps, go ahead and use it. If I just say if you hadn't used it by now, then don't go ahead and, and, and start using it. Um, in terms of the deadlift, the one thing that comes to mind for me is making sure you get a a big refeed in terms of carbohydrates, right? So anytime there's a big CNS uh, impact, uh, I would just say double your carbohydrates uh, within that next hour, 90 minutes that you're used to getting for sure. Um, and then on the, the number four, right, the burpees, overhead squats, I'd say the, the, the key to that is to keep moving. And so when you get into the burpees, don't find yourself staring at the ground, right? 
uh, and then the same with the overhead squat. So I think on that one, the key is to get moving, get to the muscle ups as quick as possible. So uh, that's about it. Good luck, everyone, and let me know how you do.